Welcome to the third video in our series of lawn maintenance. In this video we're going to look at the work needed to prepare the ground for seeding. Before we get started we wanted to mention that later in the series we'll be releasing a video looking at lawn reconstruction and major renovations. Major renovations are also best carried out in the autumn when the soil temperature has had all summer to warm. So for now, we're going to focus on lighter spring and summer works. The spring is a good time to carry out overseeding of your lawn, as well as to apply a light top dressing. Top dressing is a refined soil, normally made up with a reasonable amount of sand that is used to dress the surface of lawns. It is important to remember it is not the same as compost, Compost contains material which won't damage your lawn, but isn't really suitable for sowing grass seed into. When choosing top dressing for bigger jobs where you'll need a large amount of the top dressing, it's important to make sure that it is compatible with the current soil profile. We'll look at this in more detail in our renovation video. However, the amount of top dressing you need for a spring renovation means it is safe to go with a fairly generic top dressing that you could pick up from your local garden centre or even pitch care. As a rule of thumb, for every 10 square metres of lawn that you have, you'll need around 50 kilograms of dry top dressing. The first thing that you'll need to do to prepare your lawn for seeding and top dressing is to mow it. Remember, it may be a while before you can mow the lawn again after you've completed this work, so if you can cut it a bit shorter than normal, this will be a help. However, you may need to stage this over a few days. As a rule of thumb, you should never remove more than a third of the height of the grass plant in any one cut. Once the lawn is cut short, we should have a really good view of what we are working with. Any worn, sparse, bare or dead areas should now stand out, making it easier to identify where specific attention may be needed. It is important that we get these areas filled in during our spring renovation, otherwise these are the areas where opportunistic weeds and undesirable grasses will make their way into the lawn. The next step is to give the lawn a good clean out with your springtime rake. As shown in the video, the raking will help clear out any remaining surface debris. It will also remove any weaker grass growth and any organic matter that might be building up in the base of the sward. This is where, if you have access to a mechanical scarifier, you can save yourself some effort by running the machine over the lawn in a few different directions. It is important we clear all of the debris and organic matter before top dressing, otherwise we will in effect bury a problem for the future. This organic matter is incompatible with the soil and so will not ameliorate into the profile. Instead, it will just form a layer known as thatch, which will hamper your efforts to produce your lawn. Once the lawn has been raked clean, we can then look at some aeration. To do this, we are going to use our garden fork or solid tine fork. We'll push it into the lawn, ideally to a depth of around 3 inches, and work across the whole lawn in a pattern. Each time you push the fork in, you should move along around 4-6 to six inches. This ensures the whole lawn gets an even aeration. If you have access to a mechanical aerator, this would be the ideal time to get this into action. We aerate the lawn for three reasons. First of all, getting air to the roots and through the soil is healthy for the plant. It makes the plant healthier and gives a positive boost to all the beneficial bacteria working throughout your soil profile. Secondly, it helps the top dressing you are going to apply later mix and bond better into the existing profile. This helps to avoid layering, which, like a thatch layer, is not ideal for cultivating a strong lawn. Third and finally, aeration opens up avenues through the soil profile for the roots of your grass plants to spread. The deeper a grass plant roots, the stronger it will be. 
deeper roots give the grass plants the anchorage needed to tolerate higher levels of wear. On top of this, deeper rooted plants will have a better chance of finding water during droughts and the nutrients that are located deeper in the soil profile. Now that you've got the lawn cleaned out and aerated, it's time to start throwing on some top dressing. First focus on any major undulations, dips or divots. Top these areas up first at local level. Lay your straight edge over the top of the low spot. This will give you an idea of how much dressing you will need. Next, fill the low spot with dressing and tread in. The dressing will sink over time, so adding a little pressure allows us to build up the height with more dressing. Keep repeating this, adding a little and often until the low spot is filled and firm. You can then repeat this process for any other low spots on your lawn. Once you've topped up the low spots on your lawn, you're ready to start overseeding. If you're lucky enough to have a fertilizer spreader, then this is a perfectly good way to evenly distribute the grass seed. If you haven't got access to a spreader, then you'll need to apply the seed by hand. It's important not to put too much seed in any one spot. Seed that is sown too densely will ultimately rot and die. To spread the seed, you'll need to throw the seed onto the prepared area. Use an action similar to that if you were trying to skim a stone on a lake. Sowing rates vary for different seed types. But as a general rule, you're looking for around 40 grams per square meter. At this sort of rate, a 10 kilogram bag should cover around 250 square meters. Once the seed has been spread over the lawn, it is a good idea to gently agitate the existing grass cover to work the seed into the soil surface. To do this, lightly drag a brush over the area or if you don't have a brush to hand, you can use the rake gently. At this stage, you're now ready to get the top dressing onto your lawn. Unless you have a mechanical top dresser, or your dressing is dry enough and fine enough to go through a fertilizer spreader, then unfortunately, you're gonna be doing this manually. The best way to do this will be with the use of a shovel. But for a small area, you could use your hands. In either case, you'll use a similar action to the one used for applying the seed by hand, as if you're trying to skim a stone on a lake. At this stage, the type of lawn you're going for will determine how well you need to level the top dressing. If you're aiming for a bowling green or a tennis court standard, you'll need to get it a lot more level than if you're just wanting something easy or low maintenance. As a minimum, it is a good idea to work the top dressing into the lawn. To do this, you can lightly drag your rake over the lawn in a few directions. If you have a brush or a broom, this would work well too. However, if you do want to achieve something more level, this is where your straight edge will come in. To effectively use the straight edge, start at one side of the lawn and drag the straight edge from one end of the lawn to the other. When you get to the end of the first run, turn and continue down the second run. Continue this process until you have covered the whole lawn. It's then a good idea to repeat this process at 90 degrees to the direction you have just been in. Having completed all of this, your lawn should now have an even coverage of seed and top dressing, and depending on the type of lawn that you're aiming for, the levels should start to look a little different too. We'll talk about watering and feeding your lawn later in the series, but as a rule, Unless there is rain forecast within the next 24 hours, it's a good idea to give your lawn a light watering. Until you have been able to carry out the first cut of the lawn, it's a good idea to make sure the surface of the lawn doesn't dry out, as newly germinating grass won't have the root system to survive any prolonged drought. 
This means for the first couple of weeks, you may need to water fairly regularly, depending on the weather. You must be careful not to overwater though. Be sure not to wash the seed all into one area or to create any puddles, as this will move seed and lead to uneven germination. Depending on the seed you have chosen, you'll need to try and stay off the lawn for anything between 7 to 14 days until there is a good amount of the grass starting to come through. That's it for this video. Look out for our next episode where we'll look at mowing your lawn for the first time and discuss watering and feeding in more detail. Thanks for watching.